a school turned into a prison during the Cambodian genocide, now once more dedicated to learning. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and two of his cabinet ministers toured the Tool Slang Genocide Museum on Sunday and laid flowers in memory of the Khmer Rouge regime's two million victims. But Trudeau wasn't just receiving lessons as he wrapped up a visit to Cambodia, his eyes now cast to the upcoming G20 in Indonesia. I think we're all seeing uh, that China is uh, taking up, uh, uh, taking a more uh, active role in the world. There are some situations that we're going to be uh, challenging them directly on human rights, on uh, use of coercive diplomacy. What's not clear is how direct that challenge will be. Trudeau not mentioning whether he'll bring up imprisoned Uyghurs in Chinese concentration camps, not saying whether he'll even speak with China's president. As always, the G20 is an opportunity to meet with a range of leaders and advance Canada's interests and positions. U.S. President Joe Biden says he will meet Xi Jinping. We have very little misunderstanding. We just got to figure out where the red lines are, what, we, what are the most important things to each of us. Russia's foreign affairs minister will be at the G20 as well. Trudeau was clearer about his cold reception for Moscow over its invasion of Ukraine. I have uh, a strong suspicion that uh, uh, the Russian representative will not like what he is going to be hearing from uh, a large number of, uh, of us at the G20. There has already been pressure on Indonesia not to invite Russia to the G20. Indonesia in turn has pushed back on the meeting focusing exclusively on criticizing Moscow, suggesting the next summit on Trudeau's agenda may be more tumultuous than the one that just wrapped. Rafa Bujikani on CBC News, Phnom Penh, Cambodia.